Hi everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to this tutorial where we are going to learn about the heat map. Let me just make sure that I see um, the chat of my viewers so I can help you along the way. There we go. Let's make this a little bit smaller. Put this on the side. All right. So thank you for joining everybody. Um, today we are going to learn about the heat map. We are going to see how to create a heat map with um, Plotly in Python. We're going to see when to use it, the advantages of a heat map, and um, anything you need to know about a heat map. Um, if you would like to follow along, because we are going to do this together. The, I'm doing this live tutorial so we can actually do this together and I can help you out with any questions or clarifications that you need. Um, so go into this uh, GitHub directory that I have here. Um, I'm going to copy it in the chat and download some of this code that we're going to use. The first code we're going to use is the heat map time. So make sure to download here or just copy paste and into your spider, your um, um, Jupyter or um, PyCharm, Visual Studios, and we can actually get started and do this together. If you're watching this video after it's been live and it's recorded, um, I'm going to put this um, link under the video description so you can actually um, follow along as well. I'm also going to put a video layout section under the video description so you can go um, to any section that you want um, and skip if you want to see the Berlin crime heat map or you want to see the subscription churn heat map you can just use the video layout. Um, I'm going to give two opportunities for questions, clarifications, opportunities to learn about Dash Plotly um, in this um, live tutorial. We'll do the first break after the MBA season winning percentage. And the second one is going to be at the very end. I'm going to finish this subscription churn, stay here with you, and just um, answer any questions you might have. Um, or anything you want to know, I'm here to um, support you if you need me to learn Dash Plotly and data visualization in Python. Um, hey, Bilative, I'm glad. I'm glad you learned a lot. Oh, the multi-page. Well, that's a hard one. I'm glad you're actually taking that on. Okay, so let's get started. Um, let, we're going to do this one first. This heat map, the MBA season winning percentage. Um, so download this heat map time um, from the um, uh, GitHub link that I just sent you, and and let's do this together. Is it? There we go. Right here. All right. Let's erase this. I was just practicing for you. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do. Hey, Davi Nash. Um, so the first thing we're going to do, let me just keep this here in case somebody has questions. Um, big concerns. All right, so don't forget, the first thing you want to do is import the libraries. Let's import um, plotly.express as px, and let's import pandas as pd. Okay, if you don't have these libraries, go into your terminal in Spider, Visual Studio, and just um, all you have to do is pip install pandas pan does, make sure to spell it correctly, and then when this is done, it takes about two minutes, pip install plotly and you should be ready to go. Everything should be started. You can copy paste the code and everything is going to work. Okay, let's make this a little bit smaller here. Next thing you want to do is um, to call in the data, right? So we had data inside our um, CSV inside our GitHub. So we're going to read it because it's a CSV document. So all you have to do is go into the GitHub, um, go into the um, NBA data right here, and then we're just going to copy paste the raw version of it. You go into raw, and then you'll see copy paste. Okay, let's go back, let's go back, we'll go here, copy paste into read CSV. Perfect. And now let's print and see that we actually have it. Let's print the first 15 rows. Let's print the first 20 rows. Uh, let's go wild here, 20 rows. Um, save. Let's run it. Okay, let's see what we get. So now when we're, we're printing our MBA data, we see that we get um, 
Uh, all teams, well, we're getting Celtics because it's going back to 2016 to, to, to 19, I think, 45 or 1950, and then we'll see other teams, okay? And then we'll see the winning percentage per per team per per year, per season, right? Celtics is very well here in, in 2016, 2017. All right, so now that we have the data, what we need to do is to create a pivot table. If you want things to work out and to appear on a heat map just like this, just all the examples we have here, you have to create one way to do it. The fastest way to do it is to create a pivot table. So to do that, just do df. We'll use the pandas um, pivot method. We'll do df dot um, pivot, and inside in PyCharm, you should click Control. Control and on the pivot with the mouse, you'll see that we that it has three arguments inside the pivot method a function. You have um, the index, the columns, and the values. Okay, so the f index is going to be team, right? This one right here, we're going to choose that as the index. The columns is going to be um, year, and then the um, Values is going to be the winning percentage. I'm just going to copy this here. All right. Now let's print it out and see what we get because we need to create this pivot table. Well, the whole pivot table. We'll just print out the whole pivot, pivot table. All right. And now you see that we get a pivot table where the Team is the index. We have all these teams right here. Make it bigger for you. The year represents all the columns. And then the winning percentages represents the values. So remember this. This is really how you want um, your data frame to look like in order to uh, put it on a heat map the fastest way possible. You have index and then the columns above and to the right, and then you have the values. Okay, so now that we have our pivot table, all we have to do is just create the figure. So figure equals, we'll use Plotly Express, I am show, the image show, which is the um, um, heat map, and uh, like this, and then fig show, and now it should work. This comes from here, I'm gonna put it under the video as well. This is the main page that will teach you all about um, how to create uh, all the parameters for a uh, heat map inside of here. Make sure you have the latest version of Plotly for this to work, and you can read all about the different parameters. Okay, um, so now that we put our pivoted table inside the heat map, we can just run it, and it should um, show us all the teams. Right? We started this as an example with us five teams, but here it should actually show us all of the teams together. Let's run this again. Mm. A heat map, while wow, this is loading, oops, um, is something that you should, is very similar to, to a bar chart. See all the teams here and the different years, um, <clears throat> but it shows a lot more data. A heat map is a two-dimensional visualization of data where the color represents a third dimension. And I find that if it's a lot of data, it's a lot better to use sometimes a heat map than a bar chart. Because sometimes it's hard to see the different um, heights of the bar chart and see what's high or what's not. And for me sometimes to look at um, the colors and see different trends with the colors makes things a lot easier. So here, for example, you see that Let's take this heat map with fewer teams. Uh, the very dark colors were high winning percentage, percentages. Warriors did very well this year. Um, and the Bulls did not very well because it's very, very light color. And then you can um, uh, compare between teams, right? So if you take, for example, 2016, you see that the Warriors did a lot better than the Knicks. Uh, a little bit better than Celtics, and so on and so on. So it gives you, because it's like a three-dimensional um, uh, plot, it gives you a lot of, um, a lot of information uh, that a bar graph will not necessarily give you. Okay? So this is how we created um, the first heat map. Um, what you want to do, um, oops, once you create this heat map, um, you have a few other um, things you can do. If you wanted to, for example, limit the amount of teams that show on the heat map, because it might be hard to see all these teams, then you can use what we have here in um, the GitHub 
um, where in the code where uh, we're indexing the teams out. So for example, copy paste here. Okay, so you see how we're saying take the data frame where the index, because the index is the teams, right? Where the index uh, is only equal to these five teams, right? So if we do that, this will allow us to create this kind of chart where we have a limited amount of teams. A few other things um, that you can do with um, with um, the heat map is you can actually just copy paste this here and see what else happens. Is all these functions. This is very important in order to customize your heat map. So look here, in the heat map, uh, uh, the PX I am um, um, show uh, a method, the heat map. Um, you can choose your color, right? This, you choose it from the properly expressed built-in sequential colors, okay? We're choosing this one right here. If you have PyCharm, you can choose, it will give you a list of all the ones that you can choose from. And I'm going to show you that list right now, okay? So first of all, let's see what this color looks like. Um, the list comes from here. I'm also going to add this under the, under the video. Maybe just add it right now so you can take a look in the chat. There you go. Take a look at this. Separate aside, how you doing, undergraduate? Good luck with your studies. Yeah, probably really nice. All right, so um, go into go into here um, in this link, and um, <clears throat> you'll see the different um, sequential colors. So you can use um, the default is plasma is this one I think. But I chose, for example, right now, we chose to do this one, Y-I-O-R, or, or Y-L, I think, I'm not sure. So it's one of these, this one, I think, right? So let's do what it looks like. Oh, it's still loading. Sometimes when I do the video, it's a bit slower, the loading, so I'm sorry about that. <clears throat> let's see what that looks like. Okay, so here are the these are the, the 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 different colors. It's not plasma. Plasma is a default. This is a different color. Let's try one more color. Let's try, for example, anybody in the chat want a certain color? Tell me now. Tell me now. Going once. Going twice. Okay, we'll just choose this color. I think there is a five second lag. No, no, this is hard. Reds. Let's choose uh, reds. So if I change that and I save it and I run it, you'll see um, this sequential color right here, the red one, right? So it's a little bit lighter than, than this one that we chose before. Let's see. Um, in addition, the color is going to be loading in one second. In addition to the colors, you can also add a title with a title inside of this. And then we're using the fake update layout to um, increase the title font to 27, so it's bigger. I'm putting title underscore X, meaning 0 0.5, meaning I'm putting the title right in the middle of the page. And by doing a hover, long, uh, hover on gaps false, this is what it does. If I do hover false, this is original without, sorry, where is it? Okay, this is the red colors. You see if I hover on this, I'll see different hover, I'll see different information, but if there's no data, um, it won't show any hover. And this is because we did hover on gaps false, all right? And you see the title is in the middle, it's a bigger font, and it's a nice red color where the dark red is a high percentage of winning and the light red is a very low percentage of winning for Celtics. Um, so this is the hover and gaps false. The last um, parameter inside the update traces is a hover template. You can use the hover template to uh, make your template information um, be whatever information you want, right? So as you can see, we're saying that the y-axis is going to be called team, or we're going to have team um, colon, and then we're going to have the y-axis information. We're going to then skip a row, go break down a row, and then we're going to have year, colon, and then we're going to have the x-axis information. So you have team, 76ers, year, 2007, and then you will have um, winning percentage, and you will have the z-axis information, which is the color. 
right? So winning percentage is 0 0.2. If you did not put this, then um, I think team would go there in there by default, but this would change to color. The Z is always the last row where you see winning is always color by default. So this is a way to change um, the, the text inside the hover template. All right, so Aaron de Mexico, buenas. So we just learned how to do our first heat map um, right uh, here, our NBA heat map. Um, we'll take a, a two minute break um, to answer any questions and to let you um, um, catch up and follow along. In this break, I just wanted to um, highlight that uh, many of these tutorials are possible because of the support that I get from, from you guys, from everybody that's uh, watching me, you ladies. Um, uh, I get the support through the Charming Data uh, Patreon community, um, and so to show your appreciation, if, if these um, videos have been helping you a lot, and to help me make more of these high quality videos, um, I would be very grateful if you could uh, join my um, community. Um, the link is right here if you are uh, interested and capable of doing so. I'm going to add it here in the chat. I'm also going to add it under the um, under the, the the video if you're watching a recording. By joining this uh, Patreon community, you'll get access to different Dash Plotly tips and tricks. And I'm also going to offer these um, two um, codes in GitLab. I'm going to offer these two um, um, Python files where you can do also a heat map of a Dash data table. Um, and you can also do a heat map of um, with dash. So we're going to actually add a drop down and you can add as many um, teams as you want or take away any teams that you want to take away. Okay, I hope to see you there. But thank you for joining me um, um, so far. Um, any questions, anything you want to know before we move on to the next section, which is the Berlin crime distribution to see how to create this and how to create a heat map. If you do not have a pivot table, we're going to see that in about two minutes. If you're seeing a recording of this, just um, fast forward to, to this section, the Berlin crime, and um, under the video, and we'll, um, you'll be able to see this. Or just stay for the questions. Okay. Um, any, let's see here, uh, Devashish, how are you? How are you doing? Ron, welcome. Ya te dije, um, bienvenido, pero gracias por, por ver mi canal y por participar. Um, ojalá le, le ayude ese tipo de, de heat maps. Um, any questions about the heat maps so far, about the code, about when to use it, how to use it? other things. I'll give you about a few more seconds. If there's no questions, I'm glad. That means everything is clear and I'll move on to the next heat map. De nada, Ron. Oye, Leonardo. Claro que sé español, Leonardo. Yo pensé que estamos, estamos hablando en español. No, no intercambiamos algunos emails en español, no sé. Sí, aprendí el español un poco cuando estaba en, en, viviendo en Ecuador. Con, um, bueno, solo en ese entonces. For sure, Ron, you're, you're welcome. For sure, for sure, for sure. Eh, hey, Jonathan, de Perú. Ah, tengo otros us usuarios de, de Perú también. Um, de, de Dashplot y, y son, y saben bastante bien de Dashplot. Y. Saludos, Jonathan. Okay, démosle unos 10 segundos más. We'll give it 10 more seconds and then we'll move to the next um, heat map to see how to build this, um, these two heat maps together, the subscription and the Berlin crime heat map, okay? 10 more seconds. Let's see if there's any questions. Okay. So, um, in this case, what we're going to do is I'm going to um, copy paste because a lot of the code is very similar, so I don't have to um, write everything out. Um, if you have questions along the way, please let me know. Ah, Ron, complicado subir estos ejemplos en algún. Thank you, Tolgahan. Hey, Tolgahan. Ah, no sé. 
eh, run eh, AWS. It's, it's, AWS is, is, is a bit, let's see, is un poco complicado, it's a bit complicated, but I have a tutorial on, on, um, on Heroku and um, how to upload to Heroku. This next week, I hope to do a tutorial on upload your, your web app to um, uh, upload your dashboard app to the web using Python Anywhere. So hopefully I'll, I'll get this done by next Sunday. Um, soon to come. Ya van a ver. This is a bit complicated. Tolga Han, it's so nice to see you. Hi. Okay. Um, vamos. Let's get, let's get started. Let's do the second heat map. We're going to do the um, this heat map right here, the Berlin crime distribution. So go into the GitHub in case you don't have it. Let me copy paste it so now you have it in the um, chat right here. And then um, just copy paste that heat map.py file. Um, all of it. Let's do the first part here. Let's do all of it and then we'll, we'll show right here. And then we are going to um, uh, run it. So actually, before we run it, I'm going to hashtag this out okay so as you can see save this uh, run, run there you go okay so as you can see here we are downloading the data from um, from uh, the github where I have it it's Berlin data um, let's actually see how it looks like print df 15 and see what this data looks like. It's a lot better when you when you see the data. It's a lot better to understand how to how to manipulate it. So the first data before we do anything is year and then district. We see that um, we have uh, multiple locations. You can't see it here, but you can see it on the um, on the GitHub. You'll see that um, Berlin crimes. Um, it has multiple locations for each district, and this is important because we are going to um, group. Um, group by. You see every district Mitte has like multiple locations in st inside inside uh, this this district of Berlin. And this is for multiple years from 2012 all the way down to 2019. So what we are going to do, you see then you have graffiti and then you have the number of cases per location per district, the number of, of drug um, cases per location per district and so on and so on. So what we are going to do to create this heat map right here is you can create it in different ways. What we are going to do is we're going to group by district because I want to take um, these four um, crime types inside the, uh, the data frame, the data, and I'm going to um, take only the, the median of these crime types. So I'm going to take the median average of all the years combined from 2012 to 2019, take the median average of these four um, per district. So I'm not going to see all these um, uh, locations. I'm only going to see Mitte, like I see right here. You see? After I group by and I print it, this print is bringing out this. So there's uh, per district, I see the four different columns of four different crimes and the cases, an average, median average case for all the last seven years. All right? So now that I group by, this is um, I have to melt it. Before I turn it into a pivot table, I have to melt it, okay? Because I need all these crimes to be in one column. So I can't have a wide data frame of many, many different columns. I'm going to have a narrow uh, data frame of one column that represents crime, that represents all the different graffiti, robbery, um, aggravated assault, and burglary in one column, and the values in a different column. This will make it easier to pivot it. Um, maybe you can pivot it from this um, if you're a pandas expert um, or you know if there is a way to do it. I didn't know, so I oh, melted it first, right? So you see the ID, the district, the ID variables are going to remain to the left right here. And then the values um, that are going to be under uh, value variables under one column that is called crime is going to be all these, all these um, values, the graffiti, all the columns, right? And then the, um, the last column is the value column, which has all the numbers per crime, per district. So now that we have that, right here we can actually pivot it, right? And remember, the pivot is the index is going to be crime, the column is going to be district, and the values are going to be just from the value column. 
So that's why we have, if we do the pivot, we end up with this right here, right? The crime is a district. It, the crime is the index. The district is the columns. And then all the rest of the values represent them. So because you have the pivoted table all set up and done, now you can just uh, run your, if you wanted to, you can just do like this, fig equals um, px I am show, and you can just run df, just like this, right? And just let's show it. You don't need uh, everything here. Let's run it and see what happens. Take a second to load. <clears throat> I wonder why the first time it's always slower when I load it on uh, the first time. Oops, there we go. Okay, so close this out. Um, the map that we uh, came up with, um, with the crimes in Berlin. Uh, oh, shoot, it's still loading. One second. While it is loading, sorry, with the video with live, it's just a bit slower. But while it is loading, let me teach you a few other things inside of here. So as we saw before, um, you can... Um, you can have a color, a continuous scale, if you want to change the color that's going to go inside your, um, your heat map. Now we're going to use plasma, which is a default color. Okay, and then we added a title, and then we're going to have, we're going to put the title in the middle, we're going to give it a font. Um, and here we're changing the uh, we're changing the hover template. We're changing the information inside the hover. If you do not have this, I'll show you what happens if you don't have it. Run this. Okay, give it um, 10 seconds. It should load here, and you'll see what happens if you did not change the hover um, information. Oh, I think I'm actually doing a new heat. Yes, perfect. Close all the rest. Shoot, everybody. I don't know why it's so slow. Um, all right, let me just tell you. This is what we're creating, right? If you don't have um, the hover template, if you don't have this section right here, hover template, um, you won't have, you see how it says district, crime, and then cases? Instead of cases, it would say color, because color goes there by default. So if you want to add, um, change the, the text, just change the, the Z right here, the Z column, um, information on the Z axis, which is a color, just change and put the text that you want in there. We're going to put cases in there, okay? Okay, let's give it um, one last try. And then, um, and then we'll move on to the next one because I don't want to spend too much of your time if it's not uh, if it's too slow here. I'm just going to copy paste here from the uh, GitHub. Give it one last try and see what happens. All right. All right, so this is our Berlin crime um, distribution with the, the plasma. And as you can see, we have, um, you can compare between districts and you can compare between crimes. So you see there's a lot more aggravated assault on average in the last seven years than robbery. So that's why I like, um, I like the heat map so much because there's so many different ways and so much information you can see just by looking at colors. All right, now this is an important section. Let's hashtag this out. This is a very, very important section to learn at the very bottom here. And just do all this again. 
So this, which is the bottom part of the, of the code, this is a way to actually build a heat map where um, if you do not have um, a pivot table, you don't like working with a pivot table, or you're not sure how to create a pivot table from all the data that you have. The only thing you need to do really is to create a list of lists. You see this list of lists that I created, and it's inside the data object. Once you create a list of lists, then you can put that inside the px.imshow with the heat map method, and it will create, let's hashtag this out, it will actually create your, um, your heat map just by using a list of lists, okay? So this is very important to know because sometimes you can't create a pivot table. So if you cannot create a pivot table, just create a list of lists, and this is what happens. You see, I didn't put any x-axis, didn't put any y-axis labels, but I do have the same color that I have right here. It's just in, in a different, in a different, um, in a different way, right? So this is just a list, a list of lists, right? So this is what I did. I group by the district, just like I did above. This is the average, like, like right, I did right here, right? Group by. So this is the average of all the four um, um, crimes over the last seven years per district, right? And then what I did, I took these four crimes and I just did, um, I created, I took their values and I put them inside a list. So the result, if I print the list, the result is this. This is, this is important to know. It's a list of different lists. So you see I have one list, a list of one list, two lists, three lists, and you have a total of 12 different lists here. Why 12? Because we had 12 rows of the 12 different um, districts, right? After we grouped everything inside, um, inside districts, we only have 12 different rows in this data frame. You could see that if we just print here the, the data frame. Um, and so for every row, every district represents a list. And inside the list, every, every uh, number represents a crime, right? The average uh, median of the crime for the last seven years. So this will represent graffiti, this represents robbery, this aggravated assault, and so on and so on. But this is important to remember because now you know that you can create your labels and your x-axis and y-axis. Because in, in the heat map, in this method, if you just pass a list of lists inside the data, now you know that the x-axis always refers to the, the number of digits inside the, the lists, right? So if you have um, the first list has four digits and, and obviously every list has four digits, you know that you need four different variables on the x-axis. If you, you don't have to call it graffiti robbery. You know it refers to this, but you can call it whatever you want. You can call it um, um, D, A, something, and E, E, right? If you call this way, this is what you, this is what will show up on the graph below, right? Instead of one, two, three, you will have these values. But because we know that these refer to, oops, that these refer to um, graffiti, robbery, and burglary, we might as well put here graffiti, robbery, and burglary, okay? Now, and the y-axis refers to the list of districts because the y-axis refers to the number of, you see here the, the, the list, the number of lists inside the big list. So there's 12 lists here, and this refers to the y-axis. So I know if there's 12 lists, I know that I need um, 12 variables here. So I can do list, list, um, variable number one, variable number um, two, oops, two, a variable number, we'll call the third variable, whatever. I can put 12 variables in here or 12 different strings, um, or I can just put the districts because I know they refer to the district, right? Um, so important to remember that. And then this is the labels. This labels refer to the hover, right? When this is the information that's going to be on the hover. And then the color scale is a, a regular default color scale that we chose, even if you took it out, um, you wouldn't have it will be the same because this is a default color all right so now you can see that we have graffiti in the oops um, uh, crime types in the x-axis and on the y-axis we have our 
are different um, districts. Okay, if you want to flip this around, you'll have to flip your list of lists. You'll just have to reshape it. And this is why we have this in the code. Reshape the list of lists to swap the x-axis and the y-axis, right? If you want, um, so just do this as a list comprehension of the data. And if we print it out, if you do this, you have to swap the x-axis and the y-axis. So just do this will be the y, and this, oops, and this will be the x. And now it should work. Because remember, the number of lists um, inside the main list right here, right here, refers to, oh, come on. Do it again, sorry. Remember, the number of lists inside the main list right here refers to the um, y axis. So we have. Uh, one list here, I think we have a total of four, right? Then we're going to have to have four different um, variables. In this case, it's the, the, the crime. And we, if we have the numbers inside each list, the number of values, here I have about 12 values, refer to the, to the x-axis. So here I need to have 12 different variables, so the x-axis is going to be district. And that's why now, if it, lo <laughs> if it loads, sorry, it's slower in the video, you'll see that, um, that it creates um, this um, heat map that's um, more horizontal and less vertical because we just, we swapped, we reshaped the list of lists, okay? Give it one last shot. One last shot, PyCharm. We're not giving you more than one more opportunity. You've been slow today. <laughs> okay, do this. Close these, I think these are heavy on them. There we go. So see how instead of this way, we reshaped our list of lists using this list comprehension, and we changed our x-axis and y-axis with the data appropriately. And now instead of this, we have this um, nice um, chart. You can add a title to it, and you can add whatever you want, where you see the heat map of um, crimes in, in districts in Berlin. All right. So now that we have this, we are going to move into our last um, subscription uh, churn heat map. And here, what we are creating here is um, we're, we're using fake data to see how many people, uh, these are all the people that bought a subscription in January, and then when, um, how many canceled per week. So zero people canceled the subscription in week 22, zero people in week 28, but there was one person that canceled week 29, and nine people that canceled in week um, 38, right? So we're going to put the weeks, number of weeks on the x-axis, and the month, that onboarding month of subscriptions on the y-axis. So you have everything here inside um, the GitHub code that I sent you. Just go into the heat map churn. We'll copy paste this into your Python IDE, like this. I'm going to copy it into, I'll just put it in the same, in the same um, file, like this. Hope that it um, loads a little bit faster. And here you'll see we're, do, we're doing a few things. Mm. What we're doing here is we're changing, um, <clears throat> we're downloading the data, right? This is, this is, um, um, churn data, fake data that I created, and then we're grouping by the onboard month and the week um, subscribe, and we're taking the size. Why are we doing this? Because um, we want to know inside um, this data frame, um, we want to um, uh, 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 create a pivot table. And to create a pivot table, you can do it with unstack. It's another way to create a pivot table, okay? So when we do unstack, we're creating a pivot table, we're filling the empty values with zero. And this is a new thing that we're doing. By filling an empty value with zero, what happens is that um, instead of having this empty screen, like gray in the background, um, now everything will be blue in the background because um, blue is the zero value uh, when there's no... Um, actually no values now it's blue because it's zero so this is what you get with um, by doing by doing fill value zero okay um, <clears throat> here we go so you see that we just got this 
loaded. So instead of having a gray background here, it has blue because we change it to zero, right? And we, yeah. Um, and then we're going to re-index this because if you would print here, print the DF, you would see that April comes first. It goes by alphabetically. April, and then I can't remember the second month. So I'm re-indexing everything. So this January comes first, and then December comes last. And you can see that I printed it out right here, and you get this pivot table. The onboard month is the index. The week subscribe is the Y column. And then the values are the, 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 you know, the values inside the pivot table. And then I'm just going to show it here like we did before. We're going to show the DF. We'll choose this um, color, sequential color, um, title font, put it in the middle, and just change the, um, the hover template. Okay, I want to show you what happens um, if I don't change the hover template. Let's see what happens. By default, if you did not change the hover template, you will not have um, cancellations in the last row. It will just say color. Okay, if it loads, I will show you. Um, so this is this is this is pretty much it. I wanted to show you how to create a heat map when it's the best time to use it, and um, and and the short way, and then the fast way with um, uh, with um, pivot table is a short way and fast way, and then the 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 longer way, but you have a little bit maybe more control is with the list of lists that we just went over. Um, if you enjoy this live tutorial. Um, um, stick around. I'll have some room for questions and so we can chat a little bit. Um, um, click the like button on the video, um, subscribe below, and then turn on your notifications so you can receive a video every week about data visualization um, dashboards uh, in, in Python and how to build them. And join my patron. Uh, I really you know, appreciate your support. I appreciate people that join my community to learn more about Dash Plotly and to learn all about the different um, uh, ways that you can create your um, dashboard app. Um, I'm also going to add these two um, Python files inside uh, the, uh, to the community so they can have more more information and more data they can they can work with. All right, thanks everybody for joining me. Let us see if we have any questions. Sergio, oh wow, and está hablando mucho. Camilo, hey, how are you, Camilo? Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Let me close this, close this. Schlafer. Thank you. Thank you, Schlafer. I appreciate it. Germany, going full lockdown in three days. In Germany, you're going full lockdown in three days? I know, Sergio. I agree. Um, heat maps are tricky. Uh, there's different ways you can do heat maps. You can do also heat maps on on the data table. You can do heat maps on regular maps, but they are definitely um, they are tricky. Abel, <laughs> thank you, Abel. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, I hope I hope it was helpful. Uh, my PC, let me read some comments here. Sergio, you said you prefer VIM in Debian. What, 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 are you, what are you saying there? What does that mean? Tolgahan, let me see. I'm sorry, were you asking me which one is more efficient? Hey, um, I don't, well, you're not, you're not too late for the questions part. Um, we are, we're still answering some questions here, but I went over the whole tutorial so you can, you can watch it from the beginning if you want and download the code from, from here if you want access to all, to all the code. Using pivot or not actually? Oh, um, Tolgahan, which one is more fit? I, I, 
I think using pivot is more efficient because it's just it's just faster. You don't look at this. When we created this new heat map um, table or is it here, we only did we only we read the data. It was it was built in a way that all I, I could use just the pivot uh, uh, method immediately, and then and then I built my right after this I could just build my um, figure just doing plotly express I am show and just put df. And that, that would be my, that's it. That would be my figure. That would be my heat map. So it's, it's a lot more um, quicker when you, when you can use a pivot table. Uh, but if you don't um, want to, you can use the list of lists and just put the data and then put the x-axis and y-axis labels so they know what their, um, uh, so, the, so the graph looks pretty. Oh, Sergio, the text editor. Okay. I'm good. After, I prefer... The, oh, okay. Why do you prefer PIM as the text editor? Pankaj, you're welcome. You're welcome. Although I use PyCharm. Oh, I got it. Okay, Sergio. It's a simple text editor for Davian. Okay, I got it. Hey, Davis. Um, welcome. I'm, I'm glad you, you, you enjoyed it. I'm glad you were able to join. I'll try to do this every, every not every Sunday, um, because I, I have to also live. <laughs> it takes a lot of time, but I'll try to upload a video every Sunday, and whenever I can, I'll do a live video as well, a live tutorial, so we can get to talk and share things with each other. Um, yes, uh, yes, yes, Davis. Um, you can, for example, this is the interactive part. See, you go here. I'm, I'm sharing this with my, I'm going to put this in my um, uh, patron um, community. Um, but here I'm adding a drop down and I'm adding different, there's different teams, right? So this drop down will add teams to your heat map. Um, so now you can see as many teams as you want, or you can take teams out um, if you don't want to see certain teams. Okay. So this is written with dash. Um, and it's using, I'm using this uh, 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 heat map underscore dash Python file. So this is how you would build it with, um, to add more interactivity to your, to your, your heat map. You're welcome. It's me, you're welcome. It's me. You're going to have to change your YouTube, your YouTube name because I, I, I see so many different YouTube, um, I answer so many YouTube questions and followers. I, I can't remember the names unless, unless you have the name on there. I remember your logo. I remember it's me seeing you a million times and talking to you a million times, but I'm sorry. Sergio, um, does it not have automatic correction in PyCharm? Yeah, PyCharm, Sergio, yeah, PyCharm has automatic um, um, correction. And what I like about PyCharm is that it will tell you if you have an error. So look at this, for example. If I'm making a mistake here and I'm putting color, let's put this. First of all, you you'll see automatic um, auto auto uh, complete. So now it could, it'll tell you you know the parameters that you can use inside I am show, and then it'll tell you if you have an error. You see now I put sd whatever I, I, some object no string, and it tells you I have an error here. So if I go into hover over the error, let's go down here, hover over the red part, it'll tell me unsolved reference. See unsolved reference, SADF, so I can click on it, I can go there, and I'll see there's an error here, and I can, and I'll fix it with however it needs to be fixed. So that's, I used Atom before, but I much prefer PyCharm, it just, it just more, um, it just gives me more uh, help, because uh, I'm, when I'm coding, um, to understand where I have my mistakes. Thank you, you are welcome. Um, yeah, the documentation. It, I find the documentation, documentation in Dash Plotly is comprehensive, uh, but but yes, it's helpful when you have tutorials and you can see videos and explanations on it. Um, and Sergio, yeah, I'll, I'll try and do this on Sundays every now and then, maybe once, twice a month. So join and we can talk more. Leonardo, um, title of the video where where you show Dash Cytoscape. I've looked for it. Ah. No, Leonardo, I don't think I showed Dash Cytoscape. I don't think I have, I want to do a Dash tutorial on Cytoscape, an introduction, 
but I do not think I, I did that. If anybody is interested, what Leonardo is talking about is a dish, uh, this, this dash, um, let's do dash figure. Cytoscape is a great library inside dash. I go into the main dash uh, website and then go into um, dash Cytoscape right here. You'll see under dash open source libraries, click on this and you'll see dash Cytoscape. Overview. I'm going to copy paste the code so you have the link so you have it right here in the chat. Now Leonardo is talking about this right here, which is um, which is a, a library inside Dash. It allows you to create nodes, uh, highlighting them, labels. Whoops, whoops, zoomed out too much. Um, let's see some layout functions or callbacks, and really cool things inside the, the nodes. Come on, come back to me, come back to me. Here you go. Ah, I'm zooming out too much. Let's go inside here. See, okay, different nodes, different cities. You can move them around. You can do in circles or different ways. So if you know the callback, if you do the call, man, uh, manipulate the callback very well, you, you know how to use it, then you can, you can create Cytoscape um, library. You can use that to create these kind of um, nice networks. So, yeah, I don't know. I hope that answered your question. Um, yeah, I know. I know it's me. We've discussed many, many questions. <laughs> it's me as well. I just don't remember <laughs> the name because I talked to a lot of people. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, Tolgahan, I agree. It, it does. I Well, I don't know VS Code. I, I heard really good things about it. So I, I can't say PyCharm is better. I just... Um, well, I I haven't tried uh, VS Code uh, yet, but I've tried PyCharm and Atom, and I like PyCharm more. Um, Jonathan, yes, you need to install you need to install to run the library. You need to install uh, Plotly and and Panda if you are referring to the tutorial. Um, oh, you need to install those two things. Ron, my 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 code editor is is PyCharm. Is the one you put is it the one? Yes. I use PyCharm, or for nodes, I will use Dash, but I use I'll put everything on PyCharm. Okay. Morning here in uh, New York, a lot of sunlight. Finally, it was so cold in the last week or so, but now it looks a lot better. Abiram, how you doing? Nice to see you. I, th I thought about we were learning we were learning heat maps, but <laughs> I started my tutorial at 9:45, so um, so we we ended it, um, I finished. Now I'm just answering questions, but um, yeah, we today we went over heat maps, so we learned how to do um, heat map with subscription churn. We learned how to do this uh, heat map of Berlin crimes and how to do a, a time index heat map time on the x-axis of um, NBA percentages um, and I'm sh I shared the code here on my github so if you need it here you go this is the code where are you you can use the code <clears throat> Einstein is there a free way to include metrics in deployment in Heroku I don't think I don't I'm not sure Einstein. I'm not sure there's a free way to include metrics in deployment in Heroku. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if they charge for that because that's how they make their money. Thank you, Tolgahan. Yuvraj. Um, thank you, Yuvraj. You're welcome. You're welcome, Yuvraj. Davis. Um, PyCharm gives you a virtual environment option. So I a new problem that is a charming feature about PyCharm. Does anyone know if the disk does it automatic? So it probably would be nice to know. Thank you, it's me. Thank you, thank you very much. Ah, Leonardo, sí. <laughs> Por el chapulín. Uh, hoy tuve que cerrar la puerta porque el chapulín estaba jodiendo, entrando y saliendo y rayando la puerta, así que era la, la pared, así que cerrar la puerta está afuera, pero sí. Good catch. Bien. Um, 
Davis, that's a good question. Does anybody know if, if you can use um, uh, VS Code, you can use virtual environment on uh, VS Code? I, I would be surprised if you couldn't, but I'm, yeah, I don't know. I didn't, didn't use um, VS Code. But if anybody knows, please let Davis know if you can use virtual environment with, um, with VS Code, inside VS Code. Sí, Chapulín. Por el Chapulín Colorado. Atharva, I, I emailed you yesterday. I, um, I sent you some information on, on the Coropleth. Um, I just have a long to-do list of tutorials. Uh, maybe I'll get to it one day for, for Coropleth on different countries. But look at that file that I sent you that, that sh on, on Twitter. That should be, that should be helpful. <clears throat> All right, everybody. Um, any other questions? Any other last comments? Um, any clarifications? Anything else you want to know um, from from me about Dash, about Plotly, about getting started? You're welcome, Atharo. I hope it, it helps. It's it's very comprehensive, um, a lot of information, but I think it would help you create you create um different corporate maps on different um, in different countries. It, it shows you how to use um, GeoJSON files. Torgahan, thank you very much. I appreciate. I am glad it was very helpful. Um, yeah. Like I said, next next week I hope to do I hope to do a video on Python Anywhere and how to deploy your app on Python Anywhere. So we'll try and do um, try and do that if I have the time. Jill, Gil, um, I did not do a video on integrating Dash app to existing Flask app, but maybe in the future I'll do it. Sergio. Uh, Sergio, what, what do you mean? What what kind of in-depth subjects with graph animation? You just you just want to see graph animation on different on different graphs. Like I did one on on scatter plot, and I think I did on, on on a bar graph. You want to see different types of animation? I did this in the beginning of the last year, so you can see the beginning of the videos. In my playlist. I have some animations. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's me. I what do I do beside beside videos? Um, I play with my cat. I have um, dinner and conversation with my wife, and I do youth development. So I work in the youth development field, and I help um, children um, find uh, mentors. I build matches between uh, children and mentors and tutors um, that take them out, that um, um, show them different um, paths in life and different things they can do, and are there to support them. So I, I manage one of the departments inside that organization that helps youth um, find mentors in life and um, and become successful, become become you know successful adults, feel they have somebody there for them. Um, <clears throat> I do it. David said, "Have a great week." Don't know how to do it. But I'm trying to keep on. I would like to see a, a waterfall and Gantt chart solution. If pot worth. Oh yeah, the Gantt chart. Okay, I'll add it to. Thank you, Davis, for the suggestion. I'll add it to my uh, my to do list. Animated bar graph in which the text I I position for each bar keeps falling from the left side of the screen. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, Sergio, feel free to send send me my um uh, your code. To I'll, I'll try and take a look at it. Sometimes at nights I have time. Um, I'll see if I can help, but it's um. Charmingdata.org, um, but if not, always you can ask on Plotly forum, and then somebody will probably answer you quickly than, than I can. But I'll try and help you, Sergio. Um, no, Leonardo, I haven't used um, Altair or, or Streamlit. They are my um, my worst enemy um, to dash. No, I'm just kidding. 
Uh, they, I heard they're very good. I heard, I don't know all the air that well. I heard Streamlit is, is very good. Um, it, it creates graphs and interactivity um, very, very quickly, very fast. Um, from what I understand, I looked into it a little bit. Um, it doesn't have as many components or as much flexibility and customization opportunity that Dash gives you. So you, with Streamlit, you can start off very quickly and, and, and very powerfully at the very beginning. But if you want to customize your graph, change your page, and do all that, I think Dash still holds an advantage there. Um, so that's what I know. But I, I don't want to say anything bad about Streamlit, Streamlit because I really don't know it enough. That's what I that's what I heard and I saw from the very beginning. Um, yeah, Abel, I yeah, that's 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 what I hear people saying that Streamlit is is very uh, it's simple to build apps. But do you do you know how if it it has the capabilities that Dash has or Plotly when creating the number of graphs and and how you can customize it? And what you can do with it um, when you want to when you want to um, really change your dashboard around and do other things is it as comprehensive as as Dash? Yeah, Leonardo Dash and Streamlit. Maybe I should look more on Streamlit. I know it's good. So please, uh, you were saying, Jill, show us how we would work to play with databases. Um, I don't know. I'll, I'll have to see um, Jill or, or Gil24. If it, that would be ideal. That would be a very good tutorial. But it would it takes a long time to do a tutorial um, on on um, on how to deploy on uh, your app to the web. And so I only have time to work on, on at nights and on the weekends because I have a. a a nine to five job with youth development and helping New York City children. So if I have the time, I'll add a database to it. But it's it's not likely. It's, it's I don't think I'll have the time for that. And maybe I'll do a different um, the tutorial on that in the future. Nice, Davis. Um, uh, and had an app game. Oh, nice app game to in, in helping to develop children to make good decisions. That sounds pretty interesting, actually, Davis. That app, really nice. Good for you. Thank you for helping the the, the community, Davis, and, and the children and the elders. is so so important. Shashi Kumar did not say a lot, just a, just a period. So I hope um, uh, I hope to read more from you. Thank you, Jill. Thank you. Okay, Evan, that's good to know. Streamlit um, to build dashboard is very fast. That's good to know. I'll, 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 I should take a look at it. Atharva, you prefer Dash you, because it provides ease to integrate the plots with front end using uh, the Django or Flask. Yeah, I was wondering about Streamlit if you can actually. It's easy to upload. Is it easy to upload to the web? Is it is it yeah, is it complicated? Is it fast? Um, how can you actually upload it to the web? A Streamlit um, dashboard. Do you know Avel or Atharva? Have you ever have you ever uploaded a Streamlit um, dashboard to the web? Um, no, Camilo, I think I'm, I wonder what other people say to Camilo. I really just know Python very well, so I'm going to stick to Python, but, um, let Camilo know if you're, if you're thinking of using Dash for other languages. Does anybody use Dash for R? Does anybody use Dash for Julia? I only use it for Python because I only know Python. Let me write this. Um, I, I prefer Plotly. It just has more functions than Bokeh, in my opinion. Yongshan. Have you uploaded a stream dashboard to the web? Uh, 
<clears throat> yeah, Sergio, I, I agree. Python seems, for me, when I started learning programming, Python seemed a bit easier than R, so I just I, I'm stuck with Python. You're welcome, Daniel. No, I have no idea how to create a couple of parallel graphs with cross filter between them. I, I don't I don't actually know what you mean exactly, Daniel. Um, but feel free to write my write me to my email um, and and I can try and, and take a look and see how I can help parallel graphs with cross filter. If it just graphs with filter between the graphs, I think it's fairly fairly doable. You can just write me. All right, everybody. So it's been a while. I'm gonna have my, I'm gonna go get my breakfast, eat some, call my dad, call my grandparents, have some family catch-up time. Um, you can use flow. David says and build a flow of your process, and it can convert your flow into two more different languages to create starting. Oh, interesting. For sure, Seth here. You're welcome. Avail, but uh, they have an easy way of deploying steps, but they have an easy, plus you can use Streamlit, you can have an easy way of deploying, and you can use different plotting libraries in the same Streamlit app. Nice, that's a big advantage. That's very good. Yeah, thank you, Avail. I'll, I'll, I'll take a look at it. I just, I don't know if I, if I should, like, how would everybody feel? Everybody that's right now on this, how many people do we have here? Um, where is it? about 21. How my channel is dedicated to doing data visualization uh, so far in Dash. If I switched it up a little bit and also added some tutorials on, on doing data visualization with Streamlit, would that be something that would confuse people too much? Will that take away from the specialty of or the, the, the niche where you're just focusing on Dash? What, what would you feel your recommendations are about using charming data to create also tutorials on streamlit. Good night, it's me from India. Have a have a good have a good night. Saludos Ron. Nos vemos pronto. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I bet it won't change your love for um dashing plotly. <laughs> Thank you, Camino. Okay, everybody, so I am going to... Cuando una... Cuando una... Mauricio, no entiendo muy bien cuando una en español. I think it's going to explore other audio. Okay, thank you, Abel. Okay, Sergio, thank you for the recommendation. Uh, Davis, you find Dash to be very eloquent, not been heard of Serena, but it's easier to explore the reflection and you can never, you never be stuck in this industry. Yeah, you're right. I agree, Davis. Yeah. Maybe I should do a tutorial one to on Streamlit and see see what people think because it does seem to be look, it's easy. Chala. Sometimes you oh you would like to import a class in Spanish. Bye, Ale. Have a good one. Um, sí, Mauricio. Yo, yo podría dar una clase en, en, en español también. Depende de qué, qué quieran aprender o qué tipo de tutorial, pero claro que podría dar en español también para ayudarle a, a gente que habla más español que inglés. Okay, guys. So I'm going I'm to take off. I'm going to... Um, have some breakfast. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for um, uh, um, subscribing and joining my channel and just following along. Um, I really enjoy talking to you. 
and uh, I hope you have um, I hope you have a good day. Chao todos, chao Sergio, Mauricio, todos los que me hablaron español de América Latina o de hispanohablantes, que les vaya muy bien.